Holy Grail artworks on Pawn Stars. What do we have here? We got my Picasso. What is this, a science project? No, it's a real authentic Picasso. Wow. It's a lithograph with painting on top of it. There's only two of them in existence. Hoping to get 20,000 for it. Well, this was originally given by Picasso to my grandfather and I discovered it. Dad said, oh yeah, keep it. No, I don't have any like letter of provenance or anything like that. Okay. This next customer brings in what he claims is an authentic Picasso painting, which definitely got the attention of Corey and Chum Lee. Corey and Chum Lee would then call in an expert to verify its legitimacy. With the range and price on these things, I'm going to have to have somebody come in and take a look at it. Okay. Picasso, huh? Yeah. This is what you, and this is yours? There was only two of them made. So can you take a look at it for me? Yeah, absolutely. I think what this is, I think it's a line of cut where they would actually carve in the image on a linoleum. That would be indicative of the kind of work he would be doing. So wow. there's, okay, I see it. I see some of the embellishment. The expert was able to reveal that this wasn't just any ordinary painting. It was a linocut which actually happened to line up with what Picasso was doing during the late 1930s. The expert would then reveal what everyone has been asking for. Is this a real Picasso? Based on everything I know about Picasso and what I see here, I feel that this is an authentic Picasso image. That's really good to hear. <laughs> what would you appraise that? I think we could be looking at in excess of $100,000. That's news I've had in years. <laughs> All right, man, appreciate hey, it. Corey, always a pleasure. How much are you looking to get? Well, as close to 20000 as you can get me. To everyone's surprise, this was in fact authentic work made by the man himself and the expert even revealed that it could be valued all the way up to $100,000, which for the customer was extremely exciting and Corey was able to work out a good deal. Jim Daly Painting. It's a Jim Daly painting. That's really, really cool. You know, my dad lost like 40 or 50 pounds. He'd look a lot like that. Jump off a bridge, Ricky. Today I'm hoping to get 13,000. Where did you get it? My dad was a mover. Guy decides to tip him out with this painting. Some of his stuff does go for decent money. Farm scenes, things like that. It's well painted. This next customer brings in this really cool Jim Daly painting. From the start, Rick was impressed as he knew that Jim Daly was a popular contemporary artist that many people know, and the painting was in excellent shape. Another thing I like about him, he's not a pop artist. Things like this, they hold their value a lot better. Mm -hmm. Is this a print or a painting? It's a painting. I mean, you got his thumbprint. That's what scares me because it's on canvas, but they can print what looks like a painting on canvas. But last thing I need is to shell out money on something that's just a print. Before throwing any amount of money, Rick needed to make sure that this painting was the real deal and not just some print. Rick took some time to inspect the painting and found some red flags that made him a bit skeptical. The customer would then reveal how much they wanted. I was thinking 13,000. Okay. My big concern is it just might be a print. Let's lay this down real quick. Let me go find him. Okay. Unless you have a trained eye, you can't tell the difference between a painting and a print. You know, the closer I look at it, it it looks like it's some sort of fancy printing technique. Now, do you know much about Jim Daly? Not really. Okay, Jim's a contemporary artist. Rick wasn't 100% sure about this painting, as he knew how much printing technology advanced in recent years. So he called up one of his friends to carefully analyze every detail of the painting to make sure it wasn't a print. The expert had this to say about the painting. He really concentrated a lot on early images of America pre-World War II. Let me take a closer look at it if okay. I can. Can we, can we lay it down? You want the viewer to be able to input their own lives into the scene. I've seen printing on canvas before. I don't see the brush strokes like I should. I'm gonna flip it over. Well, I'm just looking here. You can see areas where the paints kind of run off the edge. The expert remarks that Jim Daly is a contemporary artist who is famous for his art depicting America pre-World War II. Rick's concern stemmed from the fact that he couldn't see any brush strokes he would normally see from a painting, but the expert had some insights on this. What this is, is just some sort of registry. So tell me, is this a print or is this a painting? This is an original. I think it's a one of a okay. kind. Quite a few areas on the canvas where the paint has wrapped around. It's a vintage piece. It's a nice example of an established artist. All right, so what's it worth? Probably be looking at about ten to $15,000. Really? The expert was able to confirm that this was a real painting and not just a print. This definitely made Rick relieved, but it gets even better when the expert reveals that there is a pretty good market for this painting and appraised it at a whopping ten to fifteen thousand dollars. How much you realistically want for it? Realistically, I want thirteen. How does it feel to want? Um, start at ten. No, I, I can't. I will give you six thousand bucks. Very small portion of the population can afford to spend. Eight to ten thousand dollars on a painting, okay? But it's a one of a kind piece. Did you do seven five? I'll go sixty five hundred. Sixty five hundred. 
6500 Deal, man. Cool. The customer rightfully asked for $13,000, which sounds pretty reasonable at first. But we all knew that Rick wasn't going to go anywhere near that price. Rick claims that even though it's a one-of-a-kind authentic piece, it will still sit in the store for years before someone buys it. French art. How can I help you? I actually have this art piece that I wanted you to take a look at. It's an art piece that I found at an estate sale, hoping that it's uh, Eugene Delacroix. He was actually considered the greatest French romantic painter. I can relate. I'm a very, very romantic uh, gentleman. If you know. Ooh. I'm here today to sell what I think is a Eugene Delacroix art piece. The following customer brings in this really cool Eugene Delacroix art piece, who was considered the greatest French romantic painter of his time. Chumley also takes this opportunity to flirt with the customer, which was quite wholesome. I like the etching on it, and it looked like an ink drawing. I only got the piece for $100. $300 would be great. Eugene Delacroix, a very famous painter, but only for one painting, mm -hmm. Liberty Leading the People. She's got like a battle scene of soldiers around her. Yeah. This is unfamiliar to me. This is more of a sketch, I guess. Something catches my eye, but at stage sales, you're always bound to find something. Eugene Delacroix was a very famous painter, but he was mainly famous for one particular artwork he did. Shortly after the customer purchased the painting at an estate sale, she saw the initials ED on the bottom, which prompted her to come to the pawn shop. How much are you looking to get for this? Hopefully somewhere around maybe 300. Lots of his pieces will go at auction, upwards of $100,000. Let me get my guy down here to take a look at it. All right, give me just a few minutes to see if I can find them. Thanks. Best case scenario, I'm going to Disneyland. Hello, hello. Dad. Hey, hey, how's it going? Well, I got this painting here. So we were thinking, it's Eugene Delacroix. The customer was looking to get 300 bucks for this painting, which was actually a fairly decent price. And Chumley was more than happy to help out this customer. The price for these types of painting vary significantly, so Chum Lei urgently needed to get an expert opinion on this art. What can you tell me about Delacroix? Delacroix was, at the time, the most famous artist in France. He was considered the last of the grand painters. This would be one of his sketches. When he died, he left his estate to his housekeeper. It's very, very well done. I have had dozens of Delacroix, and that is a Delacroix. The expert reveals that Eugène Delacroix had a pretty remarkable legacy and was even the most popular artist in France. The artwork definitely had a rich history behind it as it was one of Eugène Delacroix's sketches. The expert would then reveal its insane value. What kind of value does this have? Because she's asking for $300. Give it to her. So there's thousands and thousands of Delacroix, but they're of vastly different quality. I'd actually put this one right around $10,000. Wow. All right, I appreciate you coming down. Hey, thanks a lot, man. It's nice to see you. Still want the 300? No, <laughs> I'll definitely take that 10 grand. 10 grand is gonna be way out of my price point. In a surprising turn of events, the expert reveals that this sketch was worth upwards of $10,000, which definitely got the customer extremely hyped up. The customer would rightfully ask for 10 grand, but Chumley wasn't gonna go that high, but they soon made a deal. I could buy it for 4,000. Honestly, considering what I paid for it, I'll take it. <laughs> this is definitely one of the best pieces of art to be featured on the show. To Andy Warhol painting. We've got uh, four original uh, Warhols. This definitely looks like something he would do. He was um, into shoes. So am I. You weren't into like ladies' shoes, are you? I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell four uh, Andy Warhol original paintings. So where did you get these? My uh, father was an art historian, and he bought these about 25 years ago. Andy Warhol actually started an art factory. This next customer enters the pawn shop with what he claims is four original Andy Warhol paintings, which definitely got the attention of Rick and Chumley. The customer's father purchased this artwork from Andy Warhol's art factory back in the day. He more or less invented pop art. Okay. When did these get damaged? I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Because you, you see all the water damage on this. That does hurt the value. What were you looking to do with them? And I was asking about 8,000 each. It's not that I don't trust you. Right. It's just generally I don't trust anybody. Let me have someone look at it. All right, thank you. Some of the highest prices ever paid for fine art have been Andy Warhol's. Rick was definitely amazed by this artwork as he knew the impact Andy Warhol had on art as a whole and even claimed that he is the inventor of pop art. That's when the customer asks for $8,000 for each piece of art he had, and Rick needed to get an expert opinion. Gentlemen usually call me down here to take a look at paintings. Andy Warhol really set the fine art world on its ear. What I'm looking for is to try to determine exactly what original these lines here. These are actually part of a print, which is not surprising, where the actual image was printed, and then he would go in and embellish it. So do you think he actually did it or someone from his factory? The expert was pretty amazed at this painting, but when he started to closely inspect the art, he was able to tell that some of it was part of a print. 
The main concern for Rick was whether these paintings were made by Andy Warhol himself or made by the factory. I think these are authentic by Mr. Warhol himself. Nice. Uh, these are fairly early pieces, and he did a ton of fairies and cherubs, so I think he would be the one that would have done the embellishment on them. Does that make him valuable? <laughs> it does. Yes, it does. And how much has the damage affected the value? It hasn't, you know, permeated into the piece itself. You know, the compositions are still in pretty good shape. The expert reveals that these were authentic Andy Warhol paintings, which definitely amazed everyone at the store. Rick was curious whether the water damage on the paintings would cause its value to significantly decrease, and the expert had some more good news. Probably start at the auction level at around $10,000. Really? Go up. Yeah, I think so. I, the, the cherub and the fairy, these are a bit more unique, even in the $15,000 range. Really? So it was very cool to see these pieces today. I don't think Rick will have any problem selling these. The commissions at auctions are as high as 50%. What are you thinking? 20000 the expert revealed that these artworks were worth well over $10,000, which got the customer extremely excited, but Rick seemed a bit worried as he probably didn't want to spend so much money. Rick and the customer would then get into some heated negotiations. I'm thinking, uh, thinking more like 32. How about 25,000? How about 27? You got a deal. All right, 27000 All right, All thank right. you. I am thrilled with $27,000. I mean, that is more than I expected. The customer was somehow able to get Rick to raise his offer from $20,000 all the way up $27,000. Rick knew that there was a lot on the line and didn't want to lose out by being too harsh or cheap on the customer, so they worked out a deal. Print or no print? What can I help you with? I got this picture here. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is like a scary picture. I really like it. You're a weird individual for liking this stuff. <laughs> I don't like it. If it's any value, I'm uh, retired, so I could use the money. If I got a couple of grand, I'd be happy. Well, I got it from my mother. It was in the family a lot of years. Yeah, believe it or not, you got something really cool here. Oh, really? This is an engraving by Albrecht Dewar. This customer walks into the gold and silver pawn shop to sell what he claims is a pretty useless piece of junk. The man seems to think that the print is pretty ugly and is rotting away in his basement, which is why he wants to get rid of it. He was probably the greatest engraver of the Renaissance. So most of his work included demons and satanic creatures. He is still influencing Gothic artists. Do you think that this is an original? Now, while Rick launches into a whole explanation of what the print means and why the artist behind the creation liked this particular visual style, the customer only wants to know one thing. That is his autograph. It appears to be an original pressing from that engraving. I don't know the exact year it was done. They ink the plate and press it into paper. It's like a giant stamp almost. So they keep on having to fix it. So the first state will look one way. If you can get one from the 1500s in its original state, it's worth $300,000. By the looks of the item, it seems to be an original. Corey is right there by his dad to help explain what this means to the customer. He drops the bomb and tells the customer just how much he's going to be making if it is. This is not 1500. The paper is not right. This is 1700s or 1800s paper. But I'm not really sure about the value. Normally, I'd call my buddy Brett. He's busy, so I'm going to have to take a gamble on the price. A couple thousand dollars. Is it worth that? Maybe it's worth more. I don't know. I'll give you five grand for it. <sighs> Sadly, though, after all that buildup, Rick lets the man know that this piece is probably not an original judging by the quality of the paper. Rick still thinks that he can derive some value out of this thing. About 6,000. Uh, you know, he's saying five, but maybe he can get six for it. I I'm just trying to be honest with him. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you 5,500 bucks. All right, if it's worth seven, how about 6,500? I got rent, I got employees, I got overhead, I got power bills. No, I'm on 6,000. You get 5,500, I won't go up anymore. That's where the customer sees an opening to bargain. And then a bidding war ensues with Rick trying to get the best bang for his buck and the customer looking for the exact same. The two men go back and forth for a while. It seemed like they wouldn't make a deal. Tough negotiators. But I won't know for sure if the gamble is worth it till I have it appraised. Albrecht Durer, I don't get many of those. I get all manner of fine art coming in here. Do you have any idea what it means? Yeah, a little bit. The night, death, and the devil. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You've got death behind him holding an hourglass. Thankfully, the man settles on a price point that's good enough for Rick, but the important part comes after the purchase. Could this be a lucky gamble for Rick, or was his hunch about the print not being an original right after all? Towards the castle represents heaven. 
It's actually one of his most famous masterworks. See, that right there makes me think it's fake. An Albrecht Durer etching that was a first impression. That piece is sold at auction for an excess of $350,000. Well, we'll take a look. The lines are crisp, but the composition itself is very strong. At first glance, it looks like the piece might actually be the real deal. All the details in the print add up, and as Brett keeps on going, the excitement in the room builds up, which could mean some serious bucks for Rick. But is it just too good to be true? Don't think that this is a real early impression. I don't think it's indicative of the laid paper. I also don't notice in the image Mr. Durer was doing the etching. He left little grooves of metal. Over time, you lose the burr. So I don't see much in the way of burr. Even though it's not an early impression, it's a valuable. Anywhere from 20 grand to 50 grand. Sadly, though, this definitely is not the original print, which means that it's not worth as much as Rick thought it would be. And while that is sad news, the good news is that the print is still from the original carving, which means that it still definitely holds a lot of value. 500 years of history. Hey, how can I help you? Beautiful piece of Renaissance art. Open this very carefully. I mean, it's 500 years old. All right, so you have what appears to be an etching. Who is it done by? Raphael. The turtle or the artist? <laughs> it's uh, been in the family many years, and uh, my daughter about to get married. The work is worth, uh, in our opinion, uh, $95,000. This man walks into Rick's pawn shop and he claims that he has a piece of art that's over 500 years old. Right off the bat, Rick is super interested. He wants his hands on this print that's allegedly a Raphael original. And if that's true, Rick is looking at a huge profit here. When someone walks in my pawn shop, they say they have a Raphael. Walking in here, I have the Holy Grail. My wife and I got it and uh, her family gave it to us when we got married. Uh, you know, Raphael, I think, died in like 1520. And he's considered maybe the greatest painter ever. Of course, Rick lets the man know that he's extremely interested, especially if this is an original Raphael. He starts geeking out over just how valuable the piece can be. A lot of these times they had these big commissions that would take forever to do. On the side, it would be doing small drawings like this, and there would be a sheet of wax over it, and he would draw into the wax. They would soak the copper plate in acid, okay, so it would make an indention. That's why people bought the prints, because they considered it made by the artist. It's a remarkable find. Just like the last piece, this piece is allegedly the first print that was obtained from the original carving. And almost immediately, Rick starts getting into all the details, trying to identify whether or not this is the real deal. This artwork could bring in lots of money. First off, what do you want to do with it? I'd like to sell it. I was looking for $95,000. It's actually done by Raphael. You might be asking too little. The art I know about, but a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. You want to meet me over at his gallery? We can go up there. Great. All right. Okay. We'll see you there. Oh, I would like the expert to look at this and see the age of the print and how beautiful it is. Yeah. Uh, he came out to your shop on the Monet. Now, before coming to any decisions, Rick lets the customer know that he wants to get the print appraised by an expert just to make sure that both parties are getting a good deal. And thankfully, the customer agrees to do exactly that. And soon enough, it's time for the big reveal. When Rick called me and told me he was bringing somebody, because if this sketch is legit, this is going to be probably one of the most important pieces ever. You don't get much higher up the pyramid than Raphael. You've got Leonardo da Vinci, you've got Michelangelo, and then you've got Raphael. I mean, he was considered a prodigy and just an exceptional draftsman. And let's just say that Brett is more than ready to take a look at this print because of how important it has been in history. And if this is a master like the customer claims it is, Brett is convinced that this piece is going to cost a fortune. Uh, he was exceptional at capturing really the idealized human, particularly Michelangelo's David. Uh, the picture of the model that Michelangelo used for David. What I'd like to do, I want to take a closer look at it uh, with my magnifying glass. Sure. So okay. I'll, I'll take a look here. Because the customer then spills some information that takes the stakes up a notch because it looks like the sketch in the print went on to become Michelangelo's inspiration for his artwork, David. Rick is practically bursting with excitement at this point. Paper is maximum 100, 150 years old. It's never from a period. Uh, so certainly from a period standpoint, that matches up with when you said it entered into your families. Obviously, if Raphael himself had done an engraving, we'd be talking, you know, hundreds of thousands, 150 years ago. That's still, you know, 300 years after he lived. Okay. So what do you think it's worth? After a lot of careful consideration, Brett and the expert he has brought on to help him with this case come to a conclusion that the paper is way too thin to be from Raphael's time. So, while this might be an excellent replica of the real thing, it sadly isn't as valuable. 
300 and 400 dollars. It has more value as a collectible. Well, okay. Uh, it, it has a lot of value to me. <sighs> well, obviously, we're not going to make a deal because this it's, just, it's my, the money's not there. Thanks, Thanks see you guys. Bye -bye. Drive safe.